Hi, my name is Michael Hackett from Logic Gear Corporation, and today we're talking about test automation in continuous testing in DevOps as part of our uh, full series on uh, continuous testing in DevOps. So uh, I first want to talk a little bit, set the boundaries for what we're talking about today. Many people describe uh, DevOps as automation. You're automating everything. And when they do that, when they describe uh, DevOps as automation, what they're talking about really is task automation. Like in continuous integration, we use auto build uh, tools uh, like Jenkins, um, like many of the auto build tools out there, you're automating that process. That's not what we're talking about today. Uh, so much of the ops part of DevOps, uh, whether you're using so those tools um, like Chef and Puppet, you're automating tasks. We're only talking about test automation, traditional testing, QA style uh, test automation. That's, that's what we're talking about today. Next, um, the theme for this is not automate more, automate more. The theme for this is you're already automating. We need to do more intelligent automation. If you are new to test automation, then you're not going to be ready for uh, continuous testing. You need to build some of the foundation blocks that we talk about in the first few videos on what um, continuous testing is in DevOps. Uh, this automation topic is about uh, if you're already automating and you already have significant automation already built, how do we do more sophisticated, more intelligent test automation um, to satisfy the needs of continuous testing? So I, first I want to talk about a couple of stories from some uh, clients that I have, some clients that I've met doing the kind of consulting that I do uh, focused on uh, test teams and, and QA teams. So I have a couple of teams that have had some really rough starts to continuous testing. And uh, first two clients had to completely throw out the test automation they had. The first client, they were really using an old tool. The tool that they used uh, couldn't work up in the cloud. It was having a hard time uh, on virtual machines and it was, it was choking and it was slow. There were too many failures. Um, and the, the tool was really getting in the way, so we had to upgrade the tool. And as the, the many of the tests had been written uh, in the past decade, the, t the tests had gotten out of date, and the, the tests weren't really the best tests they could run. So we basically had to throw out their whole existing automation, even though they had an automation team, and start from the ground up, start from zero. Also, there was another client that I had that was really automating the wrong tests. They were... Uh, just, just because they could automate a test, they automated the test. They didn't really care about uh, the value of the test or how important it was. They knew how to automate it. They uh, were told by their managers, you have to automate as many tests as you can. It was automate more, automate more. So they built these automation suites that wound up being really slow and clunky and were very difficult to manage and had really high maintenance. In that organization, they wound up throwing out all of their tests. I should say... Uh, uh, it, it's more rare that a company has to throw things out and start over, but these are great stories to start with when we're talking about how you automate in continuous testing. The uh, third story that I wanted to tell is a client that they had good automation. They had uh, a good tool and their tool, their tool continues to work today, but their test design wasn't really great. There were actually a couple of places where they would need to go and set data or reset data, or there were a couple of little tricks to how they would get the automation uh, to get the whole suite to run on certain environments. And the automation was not able to run by a different team, by a different person whenever they needed it. And one of the important things about continuous testing is the ability for uh, you to have your automated suites, whatever they are, and have them be run against various environments by anybody. Operations could say, okay, well, we're changing some parameter in the production environment. We're going to rerun the, the QA team's uh, automation suite, and they don't need to call a QA person to have them kick it off. The ops team can run the automation, or if dev, they're going to integrate a different API. They're going to swap out what API they're going to use, and they want to run the 
regression suite, the testers, one of the testers regression suites against that new um, whole entire environment with a different API. That the dev team can run that. You don't need the test team to run the automation. And on this last client that I was just talking about, the testers had to kind of, uh, they basically had to be the only ones who ran the automation because there were too many little tricks to setting it up and without going into more detail than that, uh, the automation suites have to be able to be run by anybody. So the reason why I tell a couple of stories here is uh, this is not your parents' test automation. The, the automation that we're talking about for continuous testing in DevOps really needs to be much more technically sophisticated, uh, more lean and mean. I'm going to use the phrase lean and mean about five more times uh, in this video. And it has to be just smarter automation. We need better test design and it has to be smarter automation. Okay, so now let's talk about it. So when we talk about uh, test automation, there are a couple of guiding principles I want to bring up first. One of the new goals in continuous testing is immediate feedback. Now, for most test teams, when they automate, their whole focus is on validating functionality. So we integrate some new function and we uh, test it, and then we're gonna write a couple of automated scripts on it so that they can roll into our full regression suite and uh, we can make sure that that function is still working, that, there are, that there's no regression uh, bugs, and that when it's integrated with the whole environment, that function still works okay. Well, that may be fine in old style automation, but now we need to have some automation that just gives the team immediate feedback, immediate feedback, not run overnight, not run for five days. It gives the team immediate feedback on the health and the status of the system. It's not meant for you know, a five day regression suite, or it's not meant for uh, an overnight regression run. It's meant for, we're gonna integrate a new API, run an automated suite, and we can report back on the health immediately. Uh, so, uh, so there's that. Then there's two more things. Most people write test automation to validate functionality. Uh, and we'll leave that at that. But many teams forget that you need to have automation that's going to find bugs. Uh, it's testing. Automated testing is just automating tests that we would do manually and, and uh, being able to repeat them. We need to be able to continue our testing and find out if there are bugs. So the ideas behind continuous testing uh, in DevOps, the automation is it has to give immediate feedback. You have to find bugs and it has to validate functionality. So those are three background goals for how we're gonna set this automation up. Another idea is that we don't automate everything. I love when people tell, tell me that they automate everything or they have automated tests for everything. Anybody who really understands testing knows that you don't automate everything. You automate, hopefully you automate important tests. Um, you automate the most useful tests. You automate tests that are going to find bugs. You automate tests in functional areas that tend to break more. Uh, we would not have the time and there's not even the nece necessity to automate every single test that we could possibly run against every single piece of data, against every browser, against every mobile phone, against every environment. We don't automate everything. We have a selection of tests that we automate, and then we measure coverage out of that some way, whether we have user story coverage or acceptance criteria coverage or uh, device coverage or environment coverage, data coverage, whatever way that we measure coverage, we have some subset of all the uh, tests that we could possibly run that we automate. So we need to examine what we are automating. Um, one of the problems in automation lately has been that people tend to write smaller and smaller and smaller individual isolated tests that are, are really too small to be effective. It's almost like they're unit tests that are run through the API or unit tests that are run through a UI. The tests are really small and granular. Those tests may be fine for, for whatever reason, but they don't really simulate user behavior. Users will go into any product and they will do function one, then function two, then function three, and then go back and do function two again, then function three, then function two, then function three, and then maybe go to four or five. That that kind of end-to-end -end scenario, that kind of um, usage is really what needs to be automated. If I was going to put that in, into an example, I could log into my bank account, I could transfer 
money from one account to another. I could pay my mortgage, I could pay a bill, I could pay another bill, pay another bill, and then go back and change the amount that I'm paying on one bill, and then um, go on to another function and transfer money from one account, like a savings account or a checking account, to pay the credit card at that bank. So I may go do function one, function two, function three, function two, function three, function two, function three, then function four and five, and then log out. It's that kind of use that we have to automate tests like that um, to really simulate the user behavior, the customer behavior. And, and it seems to me from what I see in industry today is most people will automate one function or one aspect of that function in isolation because those are easier to automate, those tests break less, um, they're easier to write, they're easier to set up the data for, tests that are longer that do function one, two, three, two, three, two, three, four, five. Those will break more. Those will be harder to maintain. They'll cost more. Um, in the last video, when we were talking about testing strategy, we talked about this topic where you may have multiple regression suites. You could have a smoke test regression suite, a full regression suite, uh, a happy path regression suite, uh, an end-to-end -end regression suite. Um, you could have these multiple suites. You may, I'm not saying that you are going to have to have 500 customer flows through the whole entire application. But you need some amount that your business is going to feel comfortable with of you going from the beginning, from launching a task to taking that task to its completion, of doing a workflow, doing a whole workflow. You're going to need some automated tests that are workflow tests and not small isolated tests. So we need to avoid only small low-level tests uh, because that's really what the customers are really going to be doing and we need to make sure that that's what works. I know for a while people were trying to measure ROI. ROI on automated tests, we could have a whole separate video on how you measure ROI on uh, automated tests and I won't because so few people do it. But part of that discussion, part of the thinking is um, how effective is this test going to be at finding bugs? How important is this test? Uh, is this the best test possible to validate uh, a function? Is this the best test possible to give immediate feedback on the status or the health of the system? So rather than going through an ROI calculation, we at least have to be thinking, is this the best test possible that I could automate here? Um, and, and remember, we, we definitely need some sequences, some end-to-end, -end, some workflow tasks. So I've already used this phrase lean and mean. Many companies that have been automating for a while, automating for 10 years, 15 years, however long you've been automating the testing on your product, Many uh, automated suites have gotten bloated and slow when in DevOps, in uh, continuous testing, our automation really needs to be lean and mean. So you may wind up, if you're going to be doing continuous integration, you may wind up pulling tests out of your regression suite to make sure that it's the leanest and the meanest that it can possibly be to satisfy those couple of criteria that it gives you immediate feedback, it finds bugs, and it validates the functionality you need. So, so we need to really be thinking in this intelligent automation about lean and mean and not bloated and slow. Um, another thing that I hope that you do with your automation is have a really intelligent automation methodology. I can't tell you how many clients I've gone to and said, what kind of methodology do you use to decide what you're going to automate and how you're going to automate and design your tests? And people say, we just take our manual tests and we automate them. That's really a mistake. You want to be using a methodology like uh, ABT that uses keyword technology, action-based testing, uh, to really use a methodology that's going to be fast, it's going to be low maintenance, it's going to scale, um, you can do it on multiple environments, it's, it's cloud compatible, uh, it's going to be the best automation methodology that you can use uh, to have scalable, low maintenance, fast uh, tests that everybody on the team can use and everybody in other organizations in your uh, organization can run. So uh, if you don't already have a methodology to how you automate and what you automate, I would suggest action-based testing. But if not using action-based testing, you should, you should really think about what is the methodology that you're going to teach across the organization for how and what you automate. The last topic I want to talk about here is the tool itself. Um, I, I did mention that one story where the uh, the tool wasn't wasn't able to run on the cloud really effectively and efficiently, and the company had to throw it out, and they basically started their automation uh, practices all over again. You need to make sure. I met, and also I mentioned um, uh, testing in production. 
Testing and production is a place where you have to make sure that your tool is not going to be intrusive, right? You are going to have to run your tests um, in any environment and the tool itself is going to be able to work in the cloud. It's going to be able to test on, you know, 50 virtual machines at the same time, 100 virtual machines at the same time and not... Uh, the tool is not going to cause failures or the tool isn't going to choke and not be able to run. Um, so you may need to be making some different choices about tools uh, now that you're trying to do continuous testing because this automation needs to be running a lot. When we talk about automation suites and automation tools, we may be talking about uh, automation tool sets then whatever tool the test team had been responsible for, let's say you were responsible for a, a, a GUI-driven uh, automation suite, you may now be responsible for uh, a REST API tool, uh, a SOAP UI tool, uh, a GUI-driven uh, tool, a uh, performance testing tool, a couple of security test automation tools, where your automation suite may be a collection of five different sets of automated tests run on a variety of different tools that all get scheduled uh, in some of these uh, DevOps tools that um, it's a suite, it, it's sets of suites of tests that you're gonna be responsible for running at various environments at various stages. So, so automated testing is really grown from just GUI driven, whatever UI you're using, UI driven uh, test automation to really a set of suites and a set of tools. So automation has gone to a new level. Um, you are going to have to make sure that you have the skills to run them. You have the knowledge to write the tests. You're using a really effective uh, automation uh, design methodology. So automation really needs to be more intelligently done than kind of testers got away with in the past. Uh, but automation is really going to be, be the key to successful continuous testing in DevOps, obviously. So I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you watched all of the videos in this series and uh, come back because we're always going to be making new videos on new technologies. Thank you.